James, you can delete a little bit of that last footage. You know what, James, just fucking delete all of that shit. Morning, guys. Uh, got a lot of work today. Morning. It's actually not that, that much work. Well, including the just, hot section. No, I don't know if it's happening. It's uh, not on the maintenance plan. Oh, uh, all right. Well, we don't know, but we have an unknown amount of work today. Yeah. <laughs> it's ra it's raining again. Yep. Hanging doors are closed. Our first line of work today is we're gonna clean the safety valve. The safety valve gets cleaned every 3,000 hours, so we're gonna remove it, clean up the contact surface of the seat. It's basically a, a little poppet valve that measures the differential pressure between what's inside the cabin and what's outside the plane. This sit right here. And then before the cabin reaches critical pressure, it'll relieve the the pressure within the cabin. So basically it's to prevent the cabin from exploding if we were to have an overpressurization. The plane or the plane will blow up like a balloon. Now normally the outflow valve would uh, would take care of relieving positive cabin pressure. The outflow valve is normally what regulates cabin pressure. You have a constant supply of bleed air into the cabin to pressurize it when the, when the engine is running and the plane is in altitude. That's over here on this side. So this, this valve will, <clears throat> will modulate to maintain a, a constant pressure in the cabin as the aircraft climbs. It's a little butterfly valve that fluctuates o open and closed like this. But if it were to uh, get blocked or jammed in any way, uh, this safety valve would then open to relieve pressure in the cabin. So that's what we're cleaning. We're going to pressurize it, uh, the plane afterwards to test it. First order of business. Coffee run. Coffee run. As you can see, it is very wet because of the <laughs> rain. <laughs> hey, so a lot of you guys have been asking uh, in the comments about how to become an aircraft mechanic. In the United States, there's a few ways you could do it. You could go to a trade school, which is typically about 18 months of schooling, and, uh, and then go and test for your airframe and power plant license. Another way you could do it is by getting experience as an apprentice, so basically, uh, shadowing somebody working on aircraft and I think that usually takes about two years of full time there's an hour requirement Vince is looking it up right now how many hours of, of apprentice time you need before you can go and test for the license there's also several two and four year degree options that's what Vince and I did yep so you must be 18 years old you must be able to read write and speak the English language you have to have 18 months of practical experience it with either power plants, airframes, or airframes, or 30 months of both. Okay, so that's what it is. So 30 months, so uh, what is that? A little over two, two and a half years of hands-on uh, experience, or go to school for 18 months, or go to school for a two or a four year program, and then get, get a, a degree out of it as well. It's really not necessary. Um, I would say the majority of aircraft mechanics do not have a college degree, but it's a great career. It, it pays well, it's in high demand. High uh, demand, high you're demand, always yeah. gonna find a job. And it's a lot of fun. But yeah, in general, it's a, it's a really, it's a rewarding, well-paid, high demand career. So do it. Yeah, a lot of fun. So guys, I've uh, removed the pilot seat and exposed the safety valve and that's it right there that red hose you're looking at this is how the safety valve can sense outside pressure and know what differential pressure is maintenance manual says that the safety valve is completely independent than the outflow valve which is actually underneath this seat right here hey james why don't you tell the viewers what you're doing and what does the stall strip do allows the wing to stall at a lower airspeed so it's this strip right here. Since they night shift replaced this boot last night, I'm replacing the stall strip. And right now I'm just taping everything off and then I'm gonna glue it on there and then seal around the edges. So this stall strip helps keep uh, uniform airflow over the top of the wing, allows it to stall at a lower airspeed. Oh, if you don't know what a stall is, that's basically when the um, boundary layer of air over the top of the wing gets interrupted and so there will actually be buffeting over the wing. Basically the wing loses its ability to fly so in order for this wing to generate lift it needs to be going a certain speed and anytime there's a stall the wing's not flying fast enough to maintain lift. See that I think the technical term for it is that the wing's critical angle of attack has been exceeded so it can either be from the wing pitching up too high 
or for the amount of airflow or the angle at which the airflow is impacting the wing to be too, too great of an angle. Air going smoothly over the top of the wing, that'll cause it to start buffeting and, and rolling over the wing. Um, and again, that's when the wing will lose lift and, and will drop. In one of our other videos, we showed vane right here. And that's the system that prevents a stall. There it is, guys. I'm cleaning. It's a little filter inside here, and that's a filter screen. I'm gonna have to take this off. See the big gold chain that I'm rocking. I got the ring full of pink, never drop it. I got a stash for the cash that I owe to my daughter. All up in the cup, just to live it up. I got the streets turned cold when I walk it. It's my whole snow. And now I've taped it off, and the next thing I'm going to do is apply edge sealant. We need to apply sealant to it so that we have a smooth uh, aerodynamic edge to it. Mix part A, part B. So one part is in this section of the tube, and the other part is this white stuff in here. It's got instructions on here. So I use this plunger to push the contents of this, and now I'm going to use my drill to uh, mix it. What? You like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not perfect. Go ahead and get this tape off and see how it looks. My issue is I put it on there way too thick and then we just couldn't get it smooth after after we pulled the tape off. It'd be better if we had like a rubber squeegee type scraper, That's one that flattens. Off. It just takes practice to get it looking perfect. The outflow valve back in. Time to torque down all the nuts. here to retain it from sliding out when the pile I'm getting ready to set up for the pressurization test compressor mule so this is a 49 horsepower air compressor take air from that plug it into this box and then this box will hook up to the plane supply air to the same place that the bleed air normally goes into the plane and then we'll manually close the outflow valve and then pressurize the cabin. So we're gonna hook up this line to the cabin, uh, to the cabin sense port. This line will go from the compressor mule to this box. And then this last hose is gonna be the supply air from the box into the cabin. Right now, I'm doing these preliminary checks. The negative pressure relief valves, and by negative pressure, they mean these valves, they're flapper valves, and they flap inwards. They open inwards. So if the pressure outside is greater than the pressure inside the plane, positive pressure will go into the cabin and relieve the negative pressure. So here, we have our pneumatic pressure generator. We got an air tapping off of it. In this box, is going to regulate our air pressure going into the cabin. We have the system pressure, which is the pressure inside, and then we have the pressure going into the cabin. And this is our rate of climb. That's basically how fast the altitude is descending or uh, descending or ascending. That's important. It's just like inflating a balloon. If you inflate a balloon too quickly, it could pop. This is not exactly a balloon, but in a sense it is because it's it's holding in pressure so okay so we've got everything hooked up to do the pressurization test um, Vince just locked the aircraft actually several hundred pounds of force behind those doors trying to push outwards it would slam down and it could seriously injure them say for example if we started having an increase in altitude or airspeed while we were pressurizing that would tell us that there's a leak somewhere in the static lines within the aircraft we'd have to stop pressurizing it and fix the leak so we'll go slow first to make sure it's not leaking Regulator is out. Go ahead and crack the crack the input line. 
So right now, the box is under pressure. Vince is gonna start dialing it in. All right, James, you ready? Yeah, you can go ahead. And I'm gonna start dialing in the system pressure. Typically, this is going to be more than your cabin pressure. If you put this into a fraction, this over that equals this. Okay, so there's air going into the cabin now. So James is gonna be looking into the cabin at the instruments. I'm looking at the cockpit instruments. Uh, airspeed and altitude are stable. As we pressurize the cabin, the altitude inside the cabin goes down. Now you're at one. It's pretty accurate. And as Vince increases the pressure, you'll be able to hear uh, the plane will start making these moaning noises. And it's because there's actually air escaping from all these different screw holes. I don't know if you can hear that. And that's normal. It's normal to have air escaping from the cabin when it's pressurized. It's impossible, obviously, to have a perfect seal with all the different screws and, and bolts that we have going through the pressure bulkhead. Okay, so we've done our preliminary leak check, and now Vince is gonna bring the pressure all the way up to max differential pressure. And I'll be standing by the safety valve to let him know when it opens. So right here it says, adjust the mass airflow to stabilize the differential pressure to 5.8. Make sure the stabilized pressure in the aircraft is not more than... So you can bring it up to as much as 2,000 yep. feet per minute while we get there. Because obviously we don't want to bring the pressure too high. So I'm just here waiting for the safety valve to open. You'll know when it opens because you'll feel the air rush past it. So we're almost at the point to where the pressure relief valves open. Alright, I don't know if you guys could tell, but the outflow valve opened right at about 6.25 PSI. Okay, so I'm gonna start dialing back the pressure slightly. Okay, so that test passed the safety valve open right about uh, 6.25 PSI. So that means there's 6.25 pounds per square inch of pressure inside of that plane, greater than atmospheric pressure. If we go above 6.5 PSI, we'll have a catastrophic failure of the cabin. So we stopped the test at 6.35. If the safety valve hasn't opened at 6.35, then we need to replace the safety valve or do some troubleshooting with it to figure out why it's uh, sticking. So we got really busy and the day got away from me a little bit. Uh, Vince went to Santa Barbara to work on an autopilot issue. I'm about to run the aircraft that we did the uh, safety outflow valve check on. Just need to run it and do a pressurization check. Uh, and then I'm gonna go home.